I would like to introduce our speakers that will be leading the conversation today. We have Bridget Rundal, who is the president-elect of our San Diego chapter here, and she is senior L&D, um, a learning and development professional at LPL Financial. And we also have Tiffany Prince with us, who is an ATD national advisor for chapters, and she is the chief performance officer with Prince Performance. And they'll be talking to you today about what is in it for you to be on the board and all, everything that goes with it, the journey to join a board and how can that, that can be very enriching for you uh, in terms of developing your skills and also in getting more involved with ATV. So, so excited for this conversation. Thank you to you both. And I pass it off to you ladies. Wonderful. So can we go to the first slide and see where we're jumping into? Good morning, yeah. everybody. I'm in, I'm actually in Chicago, so it's a little bit later, but I did make sure that I had my coffee mug ready to go. Uh, Cause you know, I'm, I'm on my third cup. So <laughs> a little bit further along for you, but yeah, we wanted to have a, a conversation today uh, about What's the benefit? Uh, why would you want to be on the board if you have been involved before? You know, have you thought about those skills that you're building? And something to kind of think about, especially in this time where skill development is a huge focus for organizations. So Dr. Maureen Ori, who I know has been involved in the San Diego chapter, um, her dissertation in 2017 was looking at the benefits of uh, volunteering as a board member for ATD. And so she looked at chapter leaders at the local level all the way up through the national advisors for chapters and was asking them what kind of benefits did they see uh, from looking at that. So there are two perspectives that she had found. So for individuals, obviously their skill development and on my next slide I'll kind of jump into a little bit more about the leadership development skills that she found. But it also, people were looking to broaden their networks, the community. A lot of us are just department of one L&D folks. So to have that person that you can talk to, because I don't know about you, but my spouse still does not understand what I do, right? So they just don't get us. And it's just nice to have those conversations and bounce ideas off and are you experiencing this or that, uh, especially in this time, because we're having to pivot, we're having to react really quickly. It's nice to have that community of people. And that then leads to deeper relationships. I mean, I have friends that I have met all over the country now, um, serving at the national level, because we're, you know, we all are very like-minded, uh, very open, very uh, friendly network. So I just, it's wonderful to have all of these people that I can, you know, uh, tap into, or, you know, just if I need to you know, enhance something for my projects, uh, I know I can, you know, dial a whole bunch of people that are fantastic. Looking at the organizational level, why would your organization want to kind of give that time to have that? Because it can be difficult. Uh, some things are happening during the day. I know as a past president, it's almost like a full-time job on top of your job that you have as a full -time <clears throat> on top of family responsibilities, right? So uh, having that space, having that support from all of those groups is really important. And if you're having difficulty selling that to your organization, uh, and you're looking possibly to promote yourself maybe into a leadership role, Volunteering on a board is a great way to build those skills in a low risk environment because you can test and learn and it's more open. You can do that and then you can demonstrate, hey, here's a change initiative I led uh, for programming. I mean, that's, I've heard it described as, it's like planning for a uh, wedding every single month, especially in person, right? Because you got the food, you got the catering, you got the registration, you got the speaker. I mean, it, there's a lot of moving parts, right? So that, that's a big role. Um, and also just, they want to support the local uh, nonprofits as well. So a lot of them in their values uh, and, you know, just looking at the community, they do want that reach back too. So this is a way for us as employees to give back to the community and help support. And I think talent development is the perfect place because we are definitely looking at um, how do we support employees in this very interesting time that we're still trying to figure out as well. 
Okay, so if you can go to the next slide. I'm going to jump into, she had actually found, uh, Dr. Ori had found seven leadership skills that you can build as a leader. So I'm not sure if you guys have thought about this, but here are the things that she had come up with. So obviously leading a team, especially if you have committee members, if you're in the presidential track, you're definitely having to, you know, set the budget. Uh, making sure you're holding people accountable, submitting taxes. I mean, it's a, it is like running a small business. Uh, so you build a lot of uh, valuable skills. If you're looking to, you know, the P&L skills and budget and finance, is that something that you're trying to refine? That's a great way to kind of build that skill uh, and have support because us at the national level, our chapter services team and your past presidents or people that are on the board are there to support you and help build those skills as well. So you're not alone. So I think it's a great way to be able to do that. Uh, strategic planning. Right now, we are having to pivot. Every single chapter across the nation right now is had to pivot from their in-person activities to online very, very quickly, right? So that is a major strategic planning initiative. That's something you can say, check the box. I've been able to, to facilitate that and, and have that as a skill set now. And also you can present at local chapter meetings or even at the national level, if you feel like, you know, because there's opportunities to be able to do that. So some of our consultants, some of our business owners, that's something that's very appealing for them. Uh, being able to test content, uh, if they have new workshops, maybe, you know, being able to test in that safer environment as well and get some feedback, get some valuable feedback. Um, and there's many, many other things, but I know that we have a couple of folks that uh, have uh, been on the board or served as a leader. So uh, either if you want to say it or we can do a chat, do any of these seven uh, reach, uh, resonate with you or what are things that you have found at leadership skills that you have built? Uh, in serving as a leader on a board. Anybody have any input? Um, hi, uh, this is Gabby. I think, uh, yeah, all of them in a way, um, all, all of them in a way showed up at different times. Um, I actually was on the board of ATD San Diego many years ago for many years in different capacities uh, or different positions. And I think um, all of these show up in different ways. I th it, you know, being part of the board and being part with like-minded individuals provided like a deeper sense of uh, worth, if that makes sense. Um, you are exercising what you learn in the organization, you bring it to the board and vice versa. So it definitely, you know, made me feel taller <laughs> and uh and it made it also easy i mean it's 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 kind of wrapped up in or weaved into in, into these seven ones it, it made it easier for me to talk to senior leadership like you know like like i kind of I, I drank my own kool-aid and I, I was part of a board so why not be part of leadership here at, at the office so mm -hmm. it made me see senior leaders in a different level and speak to them in a different level. That's really good insight. You know, I hadn't even thought about that perspective, but yeah, it allows you to build that, the communication skills, uh, reaching out to sponsors or, you know, companies maybe to host venues as a benefit. Those could be difficult conversations, but I think, you know, being able to kind of hone those skills, you become more savvy and confident uh, as well. So yeah, those are definitely things that I think we could add to the list, certainly. I think we had some uh, ideas in the chat as well. Well, I, as I was kind of adding that, you know, very often when we talk to managers, we talk about things like cross-functional relationships or you know, influence over authority kind of things. And that, that's, those are both perfect examples of things you can do at ATD. You're, you're working with other peers effectively you're not their boss and you all have to figure out how to get, you know, these, these eight or so people on the board to kind of agree and work together. So it, it's very much akin to working cross-functionally um, at a business. Yeah. Yeah. Great insight as well. I, I hadn't, that's another great perspective that I hadn't thought about, but what a great skill to build that cross-functional leading without authority. A lot of us are trying to influence others. So that's a great, I, I think we definitely need to add that as, you know, 
eight and nine, you guys. <laughs> so thank you very much. If we can go to the next slide, I just wanted to share uh, perspective and I think uh, all of us have our story, but uh, just kind of as we're talking to others as well and trying to uh, think about what that next board could look like. Obviously, it takes a, um, a village to kind of help with the chapter. We can't do it on our own. Um, and a lot of times I have found uh, it's just that tap on the shoulder, which can be really hard in this virtual environment right now. How do we tap people on the shoulder when they're not even next to us? And we might not even see them. So our stories, the way that we're communicating and the way that we're, you know, showing, hey, these are skills, regardless if we can meet in person or not, um, that might be valuable. And if that's something that you're looking to maybe build out or enhance, maybe think about doing that. So part of your communications could be reaching out to folks that you know, you know, there, there's some people, unfortunately, that have been laid off. So are there ways that they could build some additional skills in this time and maybe make some new connections, right? So those might be people that you want to uh, reach out to. But getting people to step up on the board can be difficult. And again, I found that for me, it was really just having that conversation after I, I think I attended the uh, annual event to kind of celebrate everybody at the end of the year it was a holiday party. And I just saw everybody, how happy they were, how excited they were and all the things that they accomplished. And I said, I wanna be on that team. So, you know, just creating that excitement, creating what you think, hey, I think those are my people. I want to join that tribe. That's the kind of feeling that certainly in these times, people really want to feel a part of something. Giving value, giving, uh, you know, uh, skills back to the, um, to the community that you're in. You guys are yeah, providing great programming and something that's helpful and valuable for organizations as we're all struggling. And as I say, we're trying to all build the plane as it's flying, literally right now, right? So there's no downtime. It's very quick. It's very ambiguous. We have to, you know, those are skills that we're building right now. Resiliency, empathy, all of those things. We're, we're, we're having to uh, kind of test ourselves and pull those skills out and help coach others, either ourselves and um, in organizations. I definitely have been having those conversations. So uh, trying to get people involved right now, I think will be a challenge, but I think if you're sharing your story, you have a compelling kind of community, people are gonna want to be a part of it. So I just wanted to see, anybody have uh, an additional why did you join the board? What was your what was your story? How did you get kind of pulled into this? A lot of times it's over a coffee or even a beer. <laughs> I've heard too. I'll share because the person who pulled me into the board, onto the board is here, which is Bridget. And so I started volunteering um, I mentioned that I wanted to volunteer with uh, programming or workshops, and so I was connected with Bridget and built a really good relationship with her. And I, I recall very much that we went for wine at Seasons 52. They have a fantastic happy hour, everyone, and yeah. had a great conversation. And Bridget was really supportive in helping me um, see what, what could be a value for me, understanding what was important to me and what could be a value for me in volunteering, hence, and then joining the board. Um, and also actually um, Maureen, uh, Dr. Maureen Ori is uh, my mentor as well. And she was another person who talked to me about the value of that. Um, and I had one more person, which is Jeff Toyster, uh, who recommended to me in hearing about, because I'm earlier in my career, um, and he said, you know, in joining the board, you should look at a at a position on, on the board that's going to help in your development in the area that you need. So I think that that was very insightful for me, right? He said, if you're a consultant, you're looking to network, membership. If you are newer to L&D, looking to understand content and what L&D is, you know, programming. So you learn what our different offerings are that we give and the skill building that's, uh, you know, part of it. So that really helped direct me in... Um, going for director of programs. So 
that is my why and my development as an L&D professional. <laughs> yeah. And, it, you know, it's the wine. I tell you, that is, um, that is a red thread that's in a lot of the stories. So um, I don't know how we do that virtually. You know, I guess the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, Zoom. But uh, like we were talking about earlier, it's... The, may not be as effective, but I do think those conversations are, are valuable, you know, because a lot of times you have to, that tap on the shoulder is what's needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I, and also I would say another part of that is that you ultimately, like for myself, I, since I'm young in my career, I wanted to be around people who were going to help me be the professional that I want to be. Right. So in meeting Bridget and meeting a couple other, you know, people who have more experience, I said, okay, I want to be around them so I can understand more. I can, you know, speak the language. I can understand the function of a board and everything. Um, so I am a much more well-rounded professional. So the relationship that you create when you tap somebody on the shoulder, I think is, is really, really important because you want to work with these people. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks for kicking us off, Tiffany, and thanks for um, sharing your story, Gwen. That's what it's all about, right, is that connection. So, yeah, as we move over to the next um, slide in our very short deck, just to give you a heads up, I would love, um, could you guys put down one word that you're feeling right now? If it's a question that you have or if it's a thought or uh, a feeling, something that you're thinking right now after listening to Tiffany and hearing about, whoops, this is what we could do. So all that to say, yeah, I just wanted to share out, I definitely want to make sure that we meet your whys to why you're here this morning. So the idea behind this is just to give you a little bit more insight about ATD, what we do, and in our San Diego chapter in specific. So I just kind of put down, you know, piggybacking what Tiffany mentioned as far as the opportunities and skill sets that can be developed, like Gwen mentioned. For me, it really started in the same way. Um, I love how Tiffany said that she felt, you know, it was her tribe as soon as she was introduced to ATD, went to that first event. I felt the same way. It was ASTD, you know, a handful of years ago when I got involved. And um, it was just super great. Like everyone was so welcoming. And I was like, yes, this is me, you know, just nice, helpful people. And so I was um, immediately approached by our current, our then president, Carolyn Rock, to be our social media volunteer. And I'm thinking, what do I do for that? Like, I'm on Facebook, but what would I do? And she's like, oh, we'll teach you how to do it. So I was like, oh, well, how could I say no, right? And so it was just a really natural, organic, if you will, kind of overused word, but of how I got involved. So I was like, okay, sure, I can post events. And I, I love taking pictures. I naturally am always the one with my phone. You've probably all seen me, Kevin and Gabby at events, you know, one. I just do that anyways as my friend, my friend group. And so then I learned how to use Hootsuite, you know, and program the, the Twitter feed and um, get all the posting to go out. And um, I wouldn't say I did an extraordinary job, but I was getting my feet wet. You know, I was doing it. I had something to do and I felt like I was contributing. I also in that same year went through the Mentor Protege program, our nine month program here in San Diego. And through that, just kind of getting to know different volunteers, um, I had a little bit of a break because I was transitioning out of the academic, you know, arena into the business industry in learning and development. And then this programs director opportunity became available. And again, it was a really natural fit. I love putting together events and it was, it was a need. And again, that personal tap on the shoulder like Tiffany mentioned. So I did not plan to, to move into a president elect role. <laughs> it was not anywhere on, on my radar back in 20, I wanna say it was 2014 or 15 when I stepped in as social media volunteer. Um, but here I am. And then I put, you know, kind of in this, this lighter font there, I'll roll into president at the start of the calendar year 2021 and then I'll have a year's past president. So I was amazed just about two weeks ago I had a, a coffee <laughs> with someone that I work with. He's um, in our learning development team in my organization at LPL Financial and he actually trains our senior leaders, our managing directors, and he's extraordinary. He has a doctorate from Columbia and just the most wonderful human being. And he said, well, gosh, you know, with your board leadership, you know, you're on ATD and you're a part of the board and that's amazing. And um, I, I didn't realize how outsiders viewed it. And even this week, um, someone that I, one of the very first people I met with to learn more about learning and development back in like 2015, he's currently uh, working for Kaiser Permanente. And he said, well, goodness, with those leadership skills from being on the board, and it's the first thing people think of. So all that to say, we're here today to just make sure that our chapter is meeting your why. My, my vision as president-elect is to 
to double the amount of volunteers that we have for our chapter within the next year and a half. Because I believe that anyone who's paying even $1 to be a part of a professional organization wants to be involved. I don't believe anyone in learning and development wants to sit in the back row and listen, even if you're an instructional designer, often are quieter ones. So that, that's my desire. My desire is just to find out what people like to do. And that's what I want to hear from you guys. This isn't mandatory, but I just, I believe everyone has at least an hour. And I think it's a great way to get connected because I can tell you when I, I had a little bit of a break between social media volunteer and then stepping onto the board and I felt kind of lonely. Like I didn't have those same connections. I wasn't there, you know, greeting people at the door or, you know, reaching out to people. Um, so it makes a big impact on the value of your membership if you're interested in volunteering and you have the bandwidth to do that. So with that said, um, I just wanna hear from you guys. What are some questions that you have or just some comments where you can speak out loud, take yourself off mute, or you can put it in the chat. Gwen, if you, thank you. I guess I, my first question would be, if we don't have thoughts going already, why do you renew your membership or why have you been a member of ATD in the past or currently? What's the value add for you? Well, I think for me, I'll speak. Uh, do, do you want us to write or just talk? Bridget? You can talk either way, whatever you prefer. I think for me, being part of ATD is part of, um, you know, I'm always on a quest of continuous learning. There's always something that I can read, that I can uh, think about, uh, people that I can meet, and it, it helps with my quest of always learning and um, so it's something that it's it's like a basic thing that I have to have as a learning and development professional I don't even think about it it's just you know it always has to be there it's almost like my oxygen like I know that I can go to the websites either one of the websites and find content or if it's of course the local chapter then um, I can find somebody that can support my initiatives or uh, or who I can support with with something. So I think, you know, after a while, it just becomes part of who we are as professionals, at, at least for me. It's like the one membership that that is always in any kind of budget, whether it's my personal budget or my organization's budget, because it provides um, just that platform, I think, to to continue learning and to and to continue, um, you know, participating in the profession. Yeah, thanks, Gabby. I really appreciate that. And that's one of the things that Tiffany and I were talking about um, when we met a, a couple weeks ago, just to talk about today's event. Is you know kind of that difference between being a national member and being a local chapter member. And to your point, Gabby, being that having your national membership is you know really about certification and you know all of the content that you have access to so it's really just that hub the resources and because if you're going for development i know gwen you've done it i've done it probably everyone on the call it's really nice to receive that discount right when you're a national member if you're going to take a course that's oh upwards of fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it is really great to have that national membership for the discount but then you have all the access to all of those resources as well and and people and then when we look at the chapter level, the local chapter level, it's really more about the things, the initial things that Tiffany pinpointed were, it's that connection, it's having your community, it's strengthening those relationships and finding out who your peers are, you know, who are your learning and development peers and the natural growth of your personal network. So thanks, Gabby, for sharing that. Hey, Manila, okay. Let's see if there's something different new to be heard. Okay, perfect. And Manila, um, can you tell me a little bit about your role? What do you do in learning and development? I am the, can you hear me? Because I can't hear me. Okay. We can, we can hear you. Um, the, the, this particular headset is uh, sound canceling. So if the headsets are on, I can't hear my own voice. Um, so uh, I am the director of uh, uh, a training program that provides training to um, San Diego County Behavioral Health Services, both the staff and the contractors. So, um, and I've been doing this for 15 years and prior to that I was doing it for the county for 10 years. Um, eh, that's a long time. Um, and I have been actually with um, 
I was going to say STD with um, ADD for um, all that time, clearly, because I still know the old title um, um, and had been on the board for a short time. Um, I am on a number of boards already and clearly late in my career as opposed to early in my career. So yes, that's it. That's great. And tell me, why do you volunteer to be a part of other boards? What, what do they, what value add does it provide for you? Uh, a couple of things. Um, I don't like, I don't like waiting for things to happen or hoping that something is going to happen and it not happen. So um, I come from a family of managers <laughs> um, um, or people who direct things. Um, so um, it's, it's difficult for me to sit in a meeting and recognize that we've been going around in circles for the last 15 minutes. It's, I, I can't tolerate those things. Um, and I can't say, I can't, I'm not one to complain without doing something. So if, if we haven't had any, um, just talk about ATD, if we haven't done any trainings on or workshops on something, um, then I can't just complain about that. I need to do something about it or I should be quiet. Um, so that's why I'm on those boards. Um, the other is that um, I'm on a leadership role in boards that are going to provide my organization with information that's going to help them be better. So um, if they're going to give me a better understanding of the population we're serving, if they're going to give me a better understanding of how to best provide um, services to that community. Um, Wow, sounds rather Machiavellian. Um, <laughs> but yes, but that's really why I, I am on them. Besides, I like the people that are there. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I love how you tied together. You linked the connection between what you do in your day job and your volunteer role. And it's really just one strengthens the other. So that's, that's really amazing. Yeah, and I'd love it. You're a change agent, right? You're not going to, like I mentioned, you're not going to sit in the back row and put your heels up and say, oh, I'll wait till next year. You're, you're going to champion it yourself, right? You're going to step in and share your voice. So that's fantastic. I'm excited that you're joining our conversation today. Thank you, Manola. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Kevin did ask, you know, what needs do we have currently for, for ATD San Diego? Well, they're kind of across the board. If Gwen, you want to help us out, we broke them down into just a couple slides. And what I want to point out is, even when I was encouraged to consider joining the board, it was earlier than I actually did because my first question is, and will always be likely, how much time does it require? <laughs> because I wanna make sure I can do a great job, right? I don't wanna drop the ball. I don't want to disappoint. So we, we did our best as board members to break down what we're looking for and approximate the number of hours that would be required. So again, um, just to call them out, you can see them, but partnership, we're kind of talking about, we, we're trying to get sponsors. We do. Actually, our marketing team did an amazing job last year of um, promoting partnerships. And even our former CFO, he's actually just an accountant, not just, but he's an accountant. He's not even in learning and development, but really helping us to see the value in, you know, there's people in our communities that want to support what we're doing, even if it's not the people we would think of. So we've got some really great partnerships already, people that are willing to sponsor things on our website and helps us have a little bit of revenue and, and strengthen our, our exposure in the community. Technology, um, we have a technology director, he's doing amazing, Tom, and he just wants someone to give him a little bit of support, help out with some graphics for events so he's not putting all the balls in the air. So pretty minimal, one to two hours a week, and I would say probably one hour a week. Um, this is the part where Tiffany mentioned, you know, you're able to learn how to delegate right? How you can support a group of volunteers. And that's really our vision, I would say, board-wide. This being my third year on the board, um, two years as the program director, and then this year as the president-elect. It's learning how to work together, but then recognizing that every director in our local chapter, we just make all of the board titles directors, 
as long as a director has two to three to four people who volunteer with them, it's a really light lift, right? So like Tiffany mentioned, being that program director, oh my word, yes, it is a wedding, like every month, every week, whatever it is, I focused on workshops in, in my role. Um, and you know what, when there's someone else helping me, like a Gwen, it's a lot different than when I'm making every single phone call. So all that to say, that's, that's our goal, is for each of these, these are light lifts because it's a group of people. It's not just you carrying the ball across the goal line. Graphic designer, of course, to help out with our, our marketing team, just to create some digital material, and that one specifically for sponsorship for those partnerships that we're having. So again, kind of a light lift. And then on the next slide, we just have three other opportunities. Our um, current secretary, oh, we went a little too quick. <laughs> she, uh, she would just like some help and just the basics. If someone's interested in attending our board meetings and keeping minutes, that's one of the options that's available. And that would be pretty light at one to three hours per month. So if you just want to come to a board meeting, we just meet once a month. And if you want to help share out the minutes, that would be a real help for her. Um, connector, this is goes along, to, along the lines of the membership right? We just want to be connecting with the people that come to our events a little bit more. Um, I know I'm working with a volunteer right now. I'm kind of wearing the membership hat as well. Um, just to reach out. People register for an event. We say, hey, thanks. We're looking forward to seeing you. And then after the event to divide it, divide it up and say, hey, what would you think of the event? And what was your why, right? What are you looking for? How can we help partner you in the right place to make sure that you find the value that you're looking for from ATD San Diego? and potentially one to three hours a week. And that is because we've had a lot more virtual events, but in general, pretty light lift. And then we also have opportunity to have, be our CFO assistant, the chief financial officer. And just really, it's not as scary as I thought it would be. As Tiffany mentioned, you get to learn how to do financials, something I've never done, which I was eager to learn, but a little intimidated about. But it's not so bad, actually. We all learn how to look at a P&L report monthly and yearly, and it would just be someone that would help kind of Put together the data for our, our chief financial officer and again with all of these asks that we have right now every single one of the board members that would be overseeing that volunteer position will take you under their wing they will teach you what needs to be done they will not just send you a quick email and say do this and hope that you figure it out so um, that's just the spirit of atd so um, yeah so thanks kevin for asking what specific questions do you have at this point anything that you want to touch on because really we don't have anything else. <laughs> we, have a, we have a thank you slide, but we're, we wanna just make sure that um, you invested your time well this morning and make sure that you don't go away with any unanswered questions. Bridget, I think you've done a good job of providing a you know, nice overview of all the different things, all the different reasons. And it, it's especially nice to see kind of the energy just coming off of you and Gwen, and, and obviously you're getting a lot out of it. And so that, that sells it more, I think, than anything else you've said today. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that feedback. Anything else for Manola or Gabby before we send you into your weekend? No, I mean, I concur with Kevin. I think you guys are doing amazing. I think, um, you know, it's, there's this way, usually like you get super involved and then you take a little bit of a break and then we always come back. So I think <laughs> that other you know, way of, of coming back and participating and uh, volunteering in different capacities. So it's always good to learn what the chapter is doing, what, um, what is needed and where we can, you know, as fellow board members or ex, you know, like former board members and active members what we can do to support. So um, I appreciate the insight and, and everything that, that you guys are doing this year. Is, it's been really great. So thanks, Gabby. Yeah, I honestly feel just honored to be see, right? Coming on, you know, you're a past president and Kevin, I know you've contributed so much to our chapter over the years with SIGs and just volunteerism. So um, really it's amazing. And just so, you know, if you want to emulate a Tiffany, you know, at the national level and just really, really, really good people and just amazing opportunities. So thank you. Thank you for those words. Well, good. Well, I'll turn it back over to Gwen and let her wrap us up. And I really am grateful for each of you for your comments and your contributions. Oh my goodness. What a, what a great presentation from Bridget and Tiffany. Thank you so much for sharing and for everyone who was on the call. I know it's a small intimate group, but I think that we were able to share some really meaningful um, experiences and perspectives when it comes to the value of joining a board and volunteering and just really being an active member. So thank you everyone. Um, I want to apologize for 
my presentation skills at the end. And so I just stopped sharing so we could just have a conversation. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I would love to take a group picture. So if you have your camera on, if you could just look and smile and I will take a picture. We use this for our social media. Okay, great. Um, oh, Kevin joined us. Let's do it, Kevin. Let's take another one. All right. Yeah, Gabby. Uh, I do want to take my picture this morning. I just came from yoga and it's not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's how All I right. usually show up to our events. <laughs> I, I, I confess I'm pretty vain, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll we take another it. one. Everyone look. One, two, three. Okay, great. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope you enjoyed your coffee, but more than anything, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Hope to see you at future events, and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.